Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, be with you. It's a feast of St. Scholastica, twin sister of St. Benjamin, both born uh, in Italy around the year 480. As you know, Benedict founded, uh, he was a follower of monasticism, founded a monastery in Monte Cassino. Augustine had a monastery before that, it was about five miles away. They would meet about once a year um, to talk. We meet in the farmhouse. On one occasion, she wanted to keep on talking. She said, Sister, I have to go back to the monastery. And so she prayed, and all of a sudden a big thunderstorm came up. Rang so hard, you couldn't lose. What did you do? She said, Well, you were going to run away from us, but I asked God, and he did. So they talked the rest of that night. Um, and then three weeks later, Scholastica had died in the year 542. My brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so her celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth and no grass of the field had sprouted, for the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delighted to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave man this order. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. The Word of the Lord. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. All creatures look to you, 
and give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. If you take away the breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. According to Mark, Lord. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come from the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters the, not the heart, but the stomach, and passes out into the tree? Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you go online, and doing a search on the phrase, how life began on planet Earth. You get some pretty good scientific websites. And they're very honest. They'll tell you how life continued after it began. But they'll say, we don't know exactly how that happened. We don't know how the first life came to be, the first cell, the first bacteria, whatever it was, they can't, they don't know, because it's not possible. It's not possible to get life from something that's not alive. Can't do it. You make all the primordial soup you want, all the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and whatever is in there, and the stuff's dead. It's not alive. It's just atoms. How do you get atoms to come to life? You know, Jesus raised three people from the dead. He gave life to people who had it before. Those are miracles. But for a life to come with something that's dead, why not dead? That was that's not never been alive. Not dead, but never been alive. 
just atoms. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. How do you get that to come alive? It takes an act of God. It takes an act of God. The scientists don't know. They've tried lots of experiments over time to try to get this stuff to come alive. Can't do it. You can't make something that is inanimate come alive. And then how do you get something that comes alive to maybe reproduce, to eat? Because these simple one-cell organisms are pretty complex. They have to be able to eat and reproduce. So something somehow comes alive and is able to reproduce and is able to eat. And then, you know, if I think of the mindset of an atheist is there's no God, that somehow that happens. And then random mutation leads to optical nerves, eyesight, sense of smell, hearing, cerebral cortex, all by random mutations. How does that happen? Just randomly, now we, we have, you have to get eyesight. That takes a lot of faith. That that can happen accidentally. And they say, we're crazy? For believing there's a God? My guess is they don't want to think this through because it reveals where they're very weak in their argument. You can't make carbon, nitrogen, oxygen combined and to be a living organism accidentally. It can't happen. And so, you come across somebody, just tell them, do the, you know, don't go to the websites, look up how the life began, and try to figure out how do you, how does something that is inanimate come in at animal? Have them do the intellectual work to think it through. And what's the odds that happening? I mean, it's, it's impossible. It takes a miracle for something that is now to become animate. It takes a miracle. A miracle beyond raising us from the dead. A miracle beyond walking on water. It needs God. And if they're going to be intellectually honest, they'll tell you this is beyond a wall of truth that's whatever happened. Yet it happened. It, we needed a miracle. It takes a miracle, and they'll believe in miracles. People who don't believe in miracles need one. They need not just one, but lots of them. To get to a cerebral cortex, eyesight, vision, hearing, it takes lots and lots of miracles. But they don't believe in them. It's going to force them to be intellectually honest. That takes an act of God to have human beings on life on this planet. Amen.
God grant an abundant harvest. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, we put aside sinful thoughts and intentions before they turn to sinful actions. We pray to the Lord. For our parishioners, fans, and friends who are here, those who are trapped in front of us, that our Lord be the refuge in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. For our friends, Beth and Christians with God, especially John, we're for the intention this Mass. For all the that is all for the Bible. We gave them from God's majesty, glory, and heaven for all of eternity. We pray to our Lord. Take a moment now to have our intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, purify our hearts and intentions and grant our prayers according to you the will of Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray for generosity. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to have the cost. To fight and not to be to toil and not to sleep for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save the moment of the Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit with the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours accept on God the Almighty Father. We bring the offerings of our devotion to be consecrated by you, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed Saint Scholastica. For by the consolation given us in this in this life. You show that we should not lose hope of what is promised for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right. Start doing our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, our mighty eternal God, for the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, 
It is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promised the new world to come. So with all the angels and saints we praise you, as what end we are clay. Some do, some do, some do stormy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously be holy, these gifts we have brought for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and gave me thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat them. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and gave me thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection ascension to heaven, and as it for to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, to become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may gain inheritance with your land. Especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostle, Mars and Martyrs, with Saint Scholastic, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation be prayer, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and share to the Pilgrim Church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, assistant Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, 
and tire people of gain for your own. List in duration the prayers of this family, who may summon before you. In your compassion, mercy, Father, gather to yourself for all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are present to you at their passing from this life, give kind and minister your kingdom. They are able to enjoy forever fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom bestow the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command and the form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as with the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Renewed, O oh Lord, at the wellsprings of salvation, we humbly entreat you that through the session of blessed Saint Scholastica, holding more closely day by day to Christ, we may merit to be co-heirs in this kingdom of grace. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. So I'm thinking about sometime in the near future. It could be a couple weeks, it could be a month. Um, if we have more people receiving communion on the tongue than in the hand, so probably the deacon and I will do communion on the tongue, right and left, and then communion in the middle will be communion in the hand only for this for, for, for daily mass. I'm going to help things go a little bit quicker, so something to have in my mind, and we may implement that in the next couple weeks to a month or so. Okay. First, St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast them to hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy